Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar on junior senior focus. My name is Janine Outka. My contact information is on the right hand of the screen. I work with SD My Life here in South Dakota, primarily in technical assistance, professional development and training. And I'd also like to introduce Megan Tatum. Megan is our state student services director for the State Department of Education and she handles the large scale implementation and technical assistance and works directly with the vendor who provides SD My Life here in South Dakota in cooperation with the Department of Ed. Megan and I are available to you at any time. Please give us a call or email us and we are more than happy to provide you with assistance in using SD My Life. You are muted. If you have a question, please feel free to unmute. And you may also utilize the chat feature in Zoom to ask questions as needed. We will also be dropping some items into the chat as well, a couple handouts and things as we get going here. We have just today and one more webinar in our fall webinar series. So today is our junior senior focus and next week will be our focus on middle grades. We will come back in the spring with some webinars on using the reports as there isn't going to be a lot of data in the report for you yet at your local districts as your students probably have not been using the program a lot as school has just recently begun. If you need assistance or you want a personalized webinar or Zoom, please let me know and I'm happy to help you out. You might have other colleagues at school that you'd like to be able to collaborate with or have me show some features so you can all work together and I'm happy to jump on a Zoom at any time. We do have credit available. We always offer an SD My Life credit opportunity. This year our focus is on implementation. So if you're interested in a credit, it's a self-paced credit where you would identify a group of students with whom to work and implement some SD My Life activities let me know if you don't need any credit but you would like ceu contact time for your time with us on the webinar put your name in the chat and megan will make sure to have your contact information and send you a certificate for your ceu time just a quick reminder that sd my life is free for all students in 6 through 12 in south dakota and it's got our career exploration and decision making secondary and post-secondary planning, academic planning, and of course, method test prep as well. So for today, just a quick reminder about login, and then we'll jump directly into the college planning tools. We're gonna start on the student side and we'll look at the college application tool, the letters of recommendation, trans transcript request, and local scholarship features. And then we'll jump over to the educator side to see what it looks like on that part and then share some information about an upcoming Zello feature launch. Just a reminder, if you're not sure about your account or perhaps you are at a different school or you have more than one school under your responsibility within your district, let me know and I can update your account, activate your account, provide you different access, et cetera. Reminder that the students already have accounts and that is based on the infinite campus enrollment data. So it's important to have your local infinite campus data up to date as that upload happens on a daily basis and that allows that seamless access for your students to SD My Life. If you are missing a student or you see a student doesn't appear in your roster, double check that they are enrolled at 100% in Infinite Campus. And if they're new to your district, it might be that they were not in that day's upload and they would be in the following day or within 48 hours. When your students log on, they do have two options. Option one would be SD hyphen in the SIMS number. And the very first time they ever log on would be that date of birth configuration. Immediately upon using the date of birth, they will be asked to reset. So Zello has been around for about three years now. So if you're working with students over the last three years who have accessed Zello, they've already used that date of birth configuration and therefore it won't work anymore. So if they're trying it and it doesn't work, perhaps they reset and they don't remember what they reset for their password. Um, the other option is for students to use that K-12 email address option using the K-12 email as a username and the K-12 email password as password. It's important that regardless of whether you're using option one or option two for login, that students go to the sdmylife.com website in order to have access. Um, if 
you try to navigate through the Zello login website, they will not be able to use that K-12 configuration. So just a quick note about the Zello dashboards and where you're going to find the college planning information. So on the student dashboard, you're gonna see the college planning under goals and plans. And on the educator dashboard under features, the college planning will appear under features and I will be logging on live to show you, but just to give you um, a quick reminder of where that is. So I'm gonna to go to sdmylife.com and I'm gonna go ahead and log in live. And I'm gonna log into a demo site. So this is fictional student data. These are not real students. This is a demo site. And your college planning features are going to be available to your juniors and seniors. So if you go to your demo account and you select a sixth grader, the sixth graders are not going to see um, college planning items. It will be your grade and 11, grade 11 and 12. So I'm going to go ahead and click view as student. And right there on the dashboard, you'll see my college planning under my goals and plans. And just a reminder that those same items appear in this black toolbar up top. So I could hit goals and plans up top and I see college planning right there as well. So I'm going to go back to my home and I'll access my college planning. And I'm going to see two items here, call, or excuse me, three items, college applications, local scholarships, and then something called Knowledge Hub. So I'm gonna begin actually at the bottom and start with Knowledge Hub. Knowledge Hub is information for students um, or parents or you for information on help paying, with, paying for college. So there's an entire section on FAVSA, um, how to apply, information, and then lots of different information that you can use if you need to do a presentation for parents or you wanna share information with students. And of course, reminder that students do have access to Zello at home. So if they wanna share FAVSA information with their parents, just general information, lots of information about filling out the FAVSA, um, how much time do I need? How many times do I need to fill it out? What happens after I apply, et cetera? So it's a really nice Q&A section. And then of course, there's lots of links and helpful documents. So in addition to the FAVSA, there are two other related topics, uh, grants, work studies, and loans, and then of course, scholarships. So the grants, work study, and loan is very helpful. Lots of students don't understand the difference between grants, work, study, and loan, or who can get work, study, or what is the difference between a grant and a loan. So there's a great visual aid here of, of the type of aid. And then again, that really simple question and answer section for grants, work, studies, and loans, and then the helpful documents. And then finally, the scholarship piece. So if you're looking for some really good, straightforward information, about paying for college. There's a lot of information for you to utilize right there. So if I go back to my goals and plans and go back to my college planning section, I'll talk about the interactive pieces now, which are the college applications and the local scholarships. So through the college application feature, students will not be actually applying to a college. They will be creating a folder and an organizational tool for all of their different college application parts and pieces like letters of recommendation and transcripts and things like that. So I want to go ahead and create a new application. So I'm gonna create a new application and really what I'm doing is I'm creating a new organizational folder for, for an application. And the first thing I need to do is select an institution. So I'm gonna put Northern State University and you'll see it came up here and I'll hit select and then go to next. And what type of application am I starting to put my materials together for? So I need to select my admission type. And if you have students who don't know what that is, there is this call out box on the right hand side that explains what the different types are. So I'm gonna go ahead and select regular decision. 
and then the deadline. So perhaps I've looked at the Northern State University website and the deadline is Halloween, October 31st, and I wanna go ahead and create. So I'm creating a folder for all of my materials that I'm gonna need for my Northern State University application. So right now in my checklist, I have transcript and I have ACT exam score. So I'll begin with transcript. And you'll notice I have an option button here. So I can request a transcript from somebody at my school to be sent to Northern. I can add a due date for myself, meaning when do I need to have this done? And I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll select a date. I'll say October 3rd and save. So you see I've added a date, giving myself a timeline of when I need to take responsibility and get these things done. When I have it done, I can mark it as complete or I can delete this task. So I'm going to request a transcript. And as a student, I am requesting somebody at my school send a transcript to Northern State University. I'll show you what this looks like on the educator side after we go through the student side. But just to take note, you will need to communicate with us who that person at your school needs to be. If you let us know you want that transcript feature turned on, you need to let us know who that contact person will be because someone at your school needs to have access to Zello to get the note that says, hey, student wants a transcript sent. We want someone to see that. And so therefore that action would happen. So it lets me know your high school is processing the transcript. That means the person on the educator side that is getting the note or is looking at Zello and seeing that a student has requested a transcript. So that's the transcript feature. So I'm gonna go down here and look at the ACT exam score feature. Same thing, I can add a due date to that. So I'll say that um, I need to have my scores by the ninth and I'll go ahead and save. And then again, I can um, mark it as complete or I can delete that task. I got my little tabs open here. So I can add more tasks to my application checklist. So I've got my transcript, I've got my reminder about my ECT score. So I'm going to add a task. I can either create a custom task or add one that already exists. So I want to add a recommendation letter task. Perhaps I need a letter of recommendation for my application to Northern State University. So my options remain the same. I can request letters. I can add a due date like I did for my other two tasks. I can mark it as complete or I can delete the task. So I'm going to request a letter. Same thing with the transcript request feature. If you're interested in having the app, the letter of recommendation feature at your school, you need to let either me or Megan know who that contact person is, and then Zello can set that up. Because again, if a student is making a request, we want the request to go to a live person at your school so that they can, they can then uh, initiate that letter of recommendation. So here I am as a student, um, I'm going to ask Megan Tatum to write me a letter of recommendation. So I'll go ahead and put her contact information in there. And hit next. And now as a student, I have the opportunity to put a note in here. So perhaps um, there's a personal note I want to include for Mrs. Tatum. There's some information on the right hand side that that gives me as a student some reminders about letters of recommendation. Are there certain things you want this person to include? Do you want to include special skills, so forth and so on? Or perhaps there's a file I want to attach, like a resume, or maybe Northern State University has a document about letters of recommendation and what are required that I could simply upload here that Mrs. Tatum could have, or I could copy paste into this, into this uh, text box. Now, because I am on a demo site, I would, I, if I were live in a live student account, which of course we don't want to do, I would see a little blue button here on the right hand corner that said send, but I'm on a demo site so that send button isn't there because I don't have a live person in a demo site to send it to, but you would see a blue send button in the bottom right hand corner and that would appear then for the educator. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out and cancel that again because I'm on a demo site. 
So I have a transcript, a recommendation letter, and an ACT exam score of tasks that I've created for myself in my Northern folder. And I can add other tasks like a personal essay or an interview if needed, or I could create a custom task. So perhaps I need to upload a video or there's another requirement for a particular school I'm interested in applying. So again, I'm creating this organizational folder of the materials that I would need to apply. The nice thing about this is that it, it really gets the student on top of it. It gets the student involved. It helps that student become organized with all the different parts and pieces that can go in this college application checklist. I'm gonna go back to my goals and plans and my college planning here. Whoops, excuse me. Getting a little click happy with my, with my technology. And I want to move away from the college application feature, which is really creates a wonderful folder system for me. Um, I remember back when my daughter was applying for colleges, we still had the paper folders. And I remember having a whole shelf of paper folders, one for each college she was applying to and all of the different materials that we had as we gathered them and put them in the different folders to prepare to send off through the mail. So this would have been a great tool for us to use with our daughter when she was at that stage. So the next section that I want to talk to you a little bit about on the student side is local scholarships. So I'm going to search for local scholarships. Local scholarships means exactly that. They are scholarships that my home counselor or someone in my local school district has put in there for me to see. So this is a really great organizational tool for those as well. So these are local scholarships that someone at my school has put in there for me. So instead of getting an email all the time from the counselor or the principal or a counselor running things off and sending them to um, putting them in packets for students or handing them out or sending out things to parents, I can put all of my local scholarships here electronically in one place. So for example, I'll select the South Dakota Opportunity Scholarship and these are the, the particulars for this scholarship that have been uploaded by someone at my local school. Information, how much it's worth, a website for how to apply, so forth and so on. All of this has been put in there for me by someone at my local school and I can go ahead and, and get information. So if I'm interested in this scholarship, I can click add. Now that doesn't mean that I've applied, that means that I've added it to my scholarships on my own site. So I'm gonna go back to my goals and plans section, my college planning, and again, view my scholarships. That means that I've saved it, meaning I better get in there and, and apply for that one. So that's the student side, college planning. It's pretty straightforward. I can use the application tool to create an application for the different colleges. I can put as many colleges as I want. It can be an in-state college. It can be an out-of-state college. It does not matter as long as I can search them within the system. You remember I type, started typing in Northern State and it came up and I selected it. So I can create these online folders of all these different parts and pieces. I can make that electronic request for someone at my school to send a transcript to these schools. I can make that electronic request for a letter of recommendation for someone at my school to send one. I can add up the videos, the personal essays, or the other special tasks that might be required from the different places I'm interested in applying. And then, of course, the local scholarships allows me to look at the local scholarships that my, my own school personnel have added. And then the Knowledge Hub is all the information. Uh, this is just fun. The confetti time certainly isn't going to change an application, but it's a fun feature to look at on the student side. So I'm going to hop over to the educator side for just a second. So I, I can show you what you can do to make all of those things um, work for your own students. So again, I'm on a demo site and I'm looking at the educator dashboard and I'm gonna go under features and go to college planning. And the, the first thing that I wanna talk to you briefly about is Common App. 
So Common App will be available through Zello in July 2021. So some of you might be familiar with Common App or you may have utilized Common App. You will be able to sync Common App through Zello in 2021, which is a common application feature that some students are using, some colleges are using, et cetera. So more information to come on Common App. I'm gonna go ahead and start with transcripts. So as an educator, I'm on my educator side and I'm gonna view transcripts. So I've had some requests and I can see that these are my latest requests. This is what comes up first. And I, can, I could look at some that have been sent. So here are transcripts that have been sent. And I can also look at unmatched, and that means that I haven't gone through and matched these transcripts to students yet. I can also import transcripts. So if I want to import a transcript to send, so I'm going to import it from Infinite Campus or from whatever system you might have, I can just choose my local file like I might do on, on anything and go ahead and open it and it lets me know, check the imported tab when importing is complete. It could take up to 30 minutes depending on how big the file is. And so I could look at that imported tab to see where that one that I had just uploaded was. So I've got Megan's transcript here that has been uploaded. And I can go ahead and send the transcript. And here's Megan's saved school. She wants to go to MIT. And I can click that. And it lets me know that that transcript was sent. And I can select it to send again. And it has been sent. I'm going to go next. And then I'm ready to send. And I'll go ahead and hit send. And it was sent. I can go ahead and send more transcripts with for Megan and move on down the road. So I'm gonna cancel that for just a second. I'll go ahead and leave because I'm on my demo site here. So again, it will default to the latest requests. Are there any requests? My transcript has not been imported, so I would need to go ahead and import that transcript for Ally. So I can import, I can choose that file. There's that transcript. And again, it might take up to 30 minutes. And then I'll check that imported folder and then I can go ahead and send the transcript. So I'm gonna go back to the college planning just to get my nice clean home page. That was our transcript piece. So you can see if you've had any requests, you upload it and then go ahead and send it to that university. My next section is my recommendation letters. So if Megan, uh, has made a request. So it's just like the transcripts. These are my, my latest requests. Um, I can send, the let, send it to the institution by email, so forth and so on. Same thing with my transcript information. So what I need to know then is I've actually got to get a letter because she made a request. I need to write the letter first and then I can upload it and go ahead and send it. And I don't have any in my sent file because I'm in a demo site. So I'll go back to my college planning and talk about the local scholarships. So this is your opportunity to add local scholarships. So these are the ones that are already there. These scholarships will roll over. So for example, the South Dakota Opportunity Scholarship is one that's been around for a long time and we certainly would assume or hope that it would be around next year as well. You won't need to re-upload all of the same information for the ones that are already in there. You would just simply edit. You might have a new contact email for the person. You might have a new website, a new document that needs to be uploaded. So you simply edit or for ones where it might be a, a scholarship that was offered by a local family, perhaps it was a memorial scholarship and they were only offering it one time, that scholarship has been given, it's done, you can then go ahead and delete it out of the list that the students will see. So let's go ahead and add a local scholarship. 
So we'll call this one um, Welcome Scholarship. And I can give it a brief description here. And I can say that this one is going to be due on October 23rd. And it's going to be awarded on a community service base and it is not renewable. So this is my one-time scholarship. And perhaps the amount is $500. $500, and there will be one award. So you can see the items or the fields that are required. I can put the contact name, Smith, and I can put in the email, telephone, so forth and so on any of the details about the donor, how the person is going to apply. So they're going to apply uh, by email. So I'll go ahead and put that email there. Sorry, Megan, I spelled your name wrong. I can put the application requirements. So there's an essay for the person to tell me about their community service. And then any other additional criteria, uh, if there's any sort of application criteria for the person, um, military service, post-secondary school, so forth and so on. And I can also add a link if I need to as well. And then I can publish it. Oh, sorry. My typing got crazy. There we go. And go ahead and publish. So here is our welcome scholarship that has been added to my local scholarship. You may remember in the past that there was a scholarship search tool within SD My Life, and that tool is not available at this time. Right now, the only tool that's available is this local, local scholarship tool. And again, it's, a, it's an option for you to choose to utilize this tool. Um, we've certainly looked into the possibility of having them add that other scholarship piece to it as well. So that's what the transcript piece looks like on the educator side and how you import a, a, or upload a transcript and import it to get ready to send it out. You have the recommendation letter piece. You'll see those latest requests and then how you would go ahead and add or manage local scholarships if you're choosing to utilize that piece. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what the reports look like. So if I look, like, if I look at student work under reports, this just gives me my dashboard of the top hits for my student work. So just like I can look at the top suggested careers or, or the clusters or the different uh, saved schools and, and dig a little bit further and look at a specific report, I can look at the same information for college applications or scholarships. So if I look at college applications, I can see the top five institutions Regardless of the size of my district, it's just going to give me this quick bar graph of the top five. So I could have a thousand students in my high school and it's going to show me this top five, but then I can drill down further and look at all of them that are available. I can filter my data, filter it by a specific uh, grade or group of students. I could also export the information or I could filter it down by a specific institution, et cetera. So if I go back to my student work homepage here, I can also look at college application, or excuse me, local scholarships. And remember, this isn't going to show me the scholarships that the students actually completed and submitted. This is gonna show me the ones that have been added. So I gave the demonstration on the student side of where I added the opportunity scholarship to my quote unquote portfolio of scholarships. And here are all of the ones that have been added. And again, I could have a hundred scholarships in there. It's gonna, that bar graph will give me my top five hits, my num, you know, my top five number one in the land, so to speak. And then I can do an individual search. So you would certainly have more data. Again, I'm in a demo school and that's what this looks like. You also have reminder for resources. You do have that question icon that appears. So you've got, I happen to 
I happen to be in the reports feature. So you'll notice that the first hit is that tips and tricks with reports, how to run reports on different progress, so forth and so on. And then I can also use that ask feature. They're very good about getting back to you within a day, uh, responding to you about what questions you might have and, and utilizing that. I want to remind everybody on sdmylife.com under educators, we've got tutorials and training. So our different webinars that we have recorded as well as upcoming tutorials and trainings. And I, I gave you a little teaser at the beginning about a new feature that's coming. And I want to make sure that we, we make sure everyone is aware that the resume is coming back to SD My Life. So on October 8th, Zello will be doing a short webinar on the resume builder. And that will be launched sometime at the beginning of October. So it's possible that it could appear in your students' feed or in their dashboards before you, you attend the webinar. But you're certainly welcome to log in. And when it becomes available, look at the student demo account that you have available to you and play around with it. But the resume builder is coming back. And we know that was a feature that a lot of educators and students utilized in the past. So we're very excited about that coming back to us as well. So just a quick reminder that if you are interested in additional training or support, or if you are interested in the CEU hours, you put your contact information in the chat and we will make sure that we send you a a CEU certificate for that. So we're going to go ahead and stop our recording now. And